Good morning. All right, welcome to the Atlas Mountains. We're currently in Imlil at the base of Tubkow. I think we're just going to walk up and down Tubkow today. Should only take an hour or two. Quick dash up and down, we'll be done. We're well, so <laughs> hard can it be? <laughs> Hello and welcome back. I'm Kath. And I'm Stuart. And, and this, this is, is Nala. Nala. In December, we left South Wales on an epic road trip to Morocco. Join us as we attempt to take our home on wheels from mountains to deserts and everything else in between. Getting off the beaten track to show you the real Morocco. Well, we've been going about 15, 20 minutes, so I think we're nearly at the top of Tubcal. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Surely it's up here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere we go, the kids take an interest in Nala and we like to encourage a good experience with dogs for the next generation of Moroccans. <laughs> oh dear, excuse us being a little bit out of breath. We've just got to the top of Tubgal, which is uh, just up here, uh, and turned around and come back down again. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to press record, so we haven't got any of it on film. What are you going to do? <laughs> In all seriousness, though, we made it to almost 2,000 metres. Tubcal's a little over 4,000 metres, and it takes a two-day hike to get there. After enjoying the views from up top, we headed back down to the Cascades. And Kath's favourite thing, rickety bridges. <laughs> Oh, look how quick it is, though. Quick stop off then at this little tea room by the falls. Stuart's just ordered some Moroccan tea. Let's see how much Kath loves me. This much? This much? This much? This much? Nothing's going everywhere now. <laughs> Hello, good morning. It's Saturday Suk Day, so we've come into Asni where we're going to have a little look around the suk and get some supplies. Much better to support the local community here. We're in one of the villages that's been worse hit by the earthquake and they're here trying to rebuild. So what better place to spend our money today? A lot of this town is still living in tents, unfortunately. You can see the earthquake damage all around us. Uh, we haven't long pulled up, but already we've had beggars come to the van. Um, we're not complaining about that at all. But uh, the Red Cross and other organisations do recommend that you don't give directly to beggars here, but support local organisations that work in the area. If you want to bring donations with you and you're unsure where to put them, you can just hand them in at any mosque if you can't connect with an aid agency. Hello, madam. Hello, oh, hello. Uh, we just bumped into the gentleman who helped us uh, the other day connect with the local community. He was an English speaker, so uh, he came along with us and just introduced us to the group of workers. And yeah, he just stopped us here in the market. So we just stopped for a chat, which is really nice. Lovely man. Yeah. Well, no, I think that's the end there anyway. That way. Sorry? You speak English? Yes. yes I nice speak to English. meet you. Nice to meet you, good too, luck. sir. I yes. speak little English. This is good English, uh, better my, than my Arabic. My, my daughter is, is uh, learning English this year in, in school. Ah, my has daughter, she, yeah. Has she been teaching yeah, you? I'm, I'm, I'm teaching for him. Ah. But I speak, but not right. Ah, well, that's but, okay. But I have good uh, yeah. market here. Uh, you can you, more you market have, up you, here. You have good wife. I oh, have yeah, very good. 50,000 camel. Oh! <laughs> if, if I have women, very good. Only change, only change. That's right. Nice to meet you, sir. Come, come, you know, guy. No. I'm not talk for money. No. Just I want to talk English. <laughs> uh, come to Shuri for free. My name is Yeah, no problem. 
With our new farm friend leading the way, we explored and understood more of the market than we normally would have. You're going to have to give him a couple of quid now. Oh no, we did not pay. No, no pay, no, it's family. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Your family. All the vegetables in the morning. Five dirham for each kilo, but in the afternoon it's half price. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. You make shoes. Ah, Yeah, Ah, Yeah. Ah, Ah, Meat. Meat, yeah. Yes. I'm going to regret this. Yeah. I think he's just asked if we want to see the abattoir, so this could be interesting. Yeah. Women, women. Okay. Fortunately, he didn't take us into the abattoir. He just showed us where it was and explained that all the animals arrive alive in the morning and are dispatched by a vet before being butchered. He even introduced us to his donkey. <laughs> Is in Ariol. Ariol. Ariol, in Arabic. Oh, you're so soft. Constant battle to not get your toes trodden on or run over. <laughs> Morning from a nice quiet car park in Imlil in the Atlas Mountains. No idea what's going on, but let's have a look. <laughs> huh, they must have seen me coming and turned it all off. <laughs> And a quick walk into town proved that early morning music is not confined to country parks. today after our final day here we've been here for a few days just hiking and making the most of the area it's really beautiful here this is where all the Tukkal hikes start uh, so yeah really recommended to come to this area which is still seeing a bit of earthquake damage but uh, yeah the communities we're building here and um, today we got to meet with Selena Johal who's the representative out here who pointed us towards the community project that we were part of today we just met her for some tea in a cafe and a little chat putting the world to, world to rights talking about Moroccan life what's needed out here um, yeah what can be done to the communities out here and just handed us some donations for the children out here mostly hats and scarves and gloves and things which we hope will help for those that are still living in tents and things it's very cold here in the evening so uh, the little bit makes a lot of difference so, and that's our time in the mountain to come to an end it's been a lovely I think we've been in the Atlas ooh, about 10 days now coming across 
uh, it's been really really nice so today we had to Marrakesh we're heading to Le Relais de Marrakesh which is uh, maybe the most famous campsite in Morocco and as we get closer and closer to Marrakesh the driving gets worse the overtaking gets more dangerous and the scooters get more and more inhabitants <laughs> You may not know this, but this is definitely only a two-lane road. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Marrakesh. <laughs> We've just arrived at Le Relais de Marrakech. Uh, Stu's just gone to reception now. They usually want to see the passports and things when you get here. Uh, absolutely batshit crazy drive through Marrakech as usual. Details given, it was time to find our spot. Stu's just driving around, picking us a pitch. I think we've got a spot. It's a bit difficult at this time of night. I know where the sun's going to be during the day because you want a good spot, don't you? But we can't see any dogs in this area, so hopefully yeah, that'll be a good one. The appears to be off the road. Yeah, we good? Yeah, I think so. That's us then for a couple of days. Good morning from La Relais de Marrakech. This is probably the best known campsite in the area. And um, yeah, I can see why very European style camping. Pictures are a bit close together as they are everywhere in Morocco. But apart from that, it's uh, yeah, very European style campsite. Uh, went down for a shower last night, finally got clean hair. It's been filthy in the mountains. <laughs> the showers are absolutely lovely and torrent of water, which is really, really nice. So although Stuart's pulling a face like this, about it we're actually going into marrakesh later to have a little look around so after all day catching up the chores of the campsite we're now braving the crazy madness that is marrakesh to drive in marrakesh is to forget everything western society has ever taught you about driving parking at the Kutubi in Mount Mosque or evening parking for a camper van if you just want to stay here a couple of hours it had to be all night or not at all so that sent us into a bit of a spin and in true Moroccan style some kid turned up on a bike and was like follow me and we're at another parking now so we'll put this parking on our map as well and it'll be on our website on the blog post for today <laughs> Welcome to Marrakesh, Gem El Flar. Whatever anyone tells you, Marrakesh is the city that never sleeps. <laughs> Having met up with one of Kath's friends for a drink overlooking the madness of the square, it was time to find some food. The choice seemingly endless. Thank you. There you go. You want to eat? Just look at the menu. Just look at it. Okay. Thank you. We have soup. We have <laughs> I have shish kebab, chicken kebab. I don't touch. I am respect. I have to speak English. I have three restaurants. This one I have fish, calamari, and the prawn sardine fish, and same restaurants. And there, look, shish kebab, chicken, and lamb, beef, kofta, lamb chops, sausage. I have vegetarian. In a, in a good note. It's finger looking good. It's <laughs> finger looking yeah. good. And last time guarantee no diarrhea. Where are you from? Where are you from? England. Better than Nando's. <laughs> it's bloody marvelous. <laughs> Thank you for that. So we are half half. Are you being cold? Follow me. Go this way. Thank you. Sahab <laughs> Shami. <Thank you. laughs> Romantic 
enjoy dinner. I've had to. So much beard. Dinner done, it was back to the madness. about 4am. Time to check in on the dog. I've no idea what's up here to be honest. Yeah, dog's asleep. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah. What a lush evening we've had in Marrakesh and this place is my favourite building in the whole of Marrakesh. This is the Kutubiya Mosque and it's one of the few places I can talk about without even having to look it up first. So would you like some fun facts? <laughs> the Kutubiya Mosque is named after the word bookseller in Arabic and it's because when the mosque was built and for hundreds of years afterwards all this area on the side used to be full of booksellers. The booksellers no longer remain but the name does. The minaret is 77 metres high. 77 metres! It was consecrated in, oh, can I get it right? I think 1139 and fun fact, if you go to the Epcot Centre in wherever Florida. that is, Florida is it? Yeah, then there's a, a another version of this mosque built brick by brick but it's much much smaller that you can go and see and it's actually like exactly like this mosque and really cool fact when this mosque was built the guy realized that it was like three degrees off and it wasn't quite pointing at Mecca so he had the whole building pulled down and rebuilt correctly. How cool is that? Could it be a mosque? morning from morning. the crazy Marrakesh. <laughs> We've just left Relais de Marrakesh campsite. Highly recommended by the way, great campsite, really good, uh, very European style compared to other sites we've been to. And now we're just driven into Marrakesh because Stu's got a little prick. No, hang on. Stu needs a little prick. We're just on our way for his second trip. <laughs> we're just, you're going to cut that bit out, aren't you? No, I'll leave it for darling. <laughs> we're just on our way for his second rabies jab after our uh, encounter with a cat last week. You can see that we'll put a link to that video on the screen here so you can watch that if you want to and uh, then we're heading south and this will be our final foray south on this trip before we start heading north permanently have you got your little vaccine card i hope so <laughs> yep and passport Time for number three. <laughs> now that we've finished in Marrakesh, we're going to start to head south. This will be our final push south of the trip. And we're going to do the Tizian Test Pass because we like a bit of a challenge. And then that will take us then to Taradunt. And then I think we haven't quite decided yet, but I think the plan then is to go down to Tarafrut and then hit the coast at Sidi Ifni. And then from that point onwards, we'll be heading north. Let's not talk about that though. Um, we haven't experienced any of the Moroccan coast at all, but it's all coming soon. So keep watching, make sure you like and subscribe for future episodes. And then you get to see what the Moroccan coast is like as we head north from here now. So this is us this afternoon, driving on the road uh, to the top of the Tizian Test Pass. 
where we are hoping we'll be able to spend the night tonight and then driving down the exciting part of the pass which I've heard is as bumpy as this bit. I'm sure you can hear everything rattling around me. Um, <laughs> and it's holding the pieces as we drive. <laughs> All the way down the other side. So, but just as a reassurance to people who are considering coming to Morocco, you don't have to drive all these exciting roads. My boyfriend is just crazy. You can come here perfectly fine and just stick to the end roads and the national route. So if you get a road in Morocco and the name of the road starts with N, then that is a national route or route nationale and it will be tarmacked. So if you get to a road and it starts with an R, that just means it's ruder and that's a mix. So sometimes it will be tarmac and sometimes it will be bumpy gravel like this. If you come to a road and it starts with a P, good luck. <laughs> so it's probably going to shake the van to pieces. Probably going to bump you along all the way along the road. The drive here is absolutely beautiful, but there are entire villages here that have just been completely flattened by the earthquake. Lots and lots and lots of tent villages, people still living under plastic, which is just insane five, six months after the earthquake. You know, it's pretty shocking to be honest that these people, long after the news stories have gone away, are still here struggling to rebuild. Uh, lots of people at work in today as well. You can see people working on their own properties and things trying to rebuild. It's, uh, it's a pretty grim situation really. We did a whole video on this earlier in the week so uh, make sure you check that out and uh, you can see how maybe you can help a little bit too. And eventually the gravel turned to tarmac making the ride a lot smoother. So here we are at the high point of the Tizian Test Pass going towards Tower Dunt. Uh, the road in is it's challenging but it's doable even for us we saw a couple of larger motorhomes as well so it is manageable um, we're at a little restaurant at the top uh, you can't miss it it's pretty much the only thing on the whole pass uh, and it's cost uh, 60 dirhams to stay tonight which is about five pounds there's no facilities here there is a restaurant here though with the toilets in there and things and he says he's got coffee tea and beer he said so <laughs> we might go and check that out later and he comes to ask Ask if we want any food or anything I think obviously they make most of their money from the food letting you stay over and then selling you a meal as well so uh, but yeah it's absolutely beautiful here so we've come from that way and tomorrow we'll be going that way I'll show you the view now so you can just see parts of the pass over there that we've just come up Good morning from 2100 meters. <laughs> we had a lovely night last night at Auberge Haute View, which it certainly was that. <laughs> lovely, lovely, peaceful night at the Auberge up there. Just 60 dirhams a night, which works out at about five pounds. Uh, no water refill or waste or anything, but there's a little cafe there so you can grab something to eat and uh, they've got wi-fi on the premises as well and today we are heading down the other side of the tizzy and test pass which i have just seen below me yes it's so fun <laughs> yeah, like the road's collapsed there so you've got to go in to go out wow And every now and then, a quick reminder of the earthquake. Buildings just falling off the mountain. 
And then just like that, the tarmac returns, allowing me to enjoy the twists and turns of this incredible drive. This road is mental, absolutely mental. It is the windiest road I have ever driven in my life. And people coming towards you, we've just had a lorry nearly take us out coming around the corner. I'm a racer, I'm all for cutting corners and hitting apexes, but only when you can see around the blooming corner. These mad bastards up here, they come around a blind corner on the middle of the road. All of a sudden, you've got a truck in front of you. So not only are you battling with the road itself, but you're battling with the people coming towards you as well. Yeah, what a great road. So we're now less than an hour from Tarfruit, which is our final destination today. And um, wow, what a drive, honestly. <laughs> These roads have just been sensational. I am loving it. <laughs> but I again want my little rear wheel drive sports car. This is, uh, yeah, for a long road, the tarmac has been pretty good. There's one or two spots where it goes a little bit rumbly, but uh, for the most part, this has been, yeah, probably the best driving road. Not necessarily the best for scenery, but as a driver, oh, it's epic. <laughs> yeah, the tarmac's been really smooth for this section, which uh, certainly makes things easier. Although it's just as exciting and beautiful on the broken up bits as well. But I tell you, wherever I've been in the, way, in the world, not in Wales when I'm at home, not in Scotland and I thought they'd take some beating, not in the Alps and not in Spain, but Morocco has the most beautiful mountain road in the world. I'm going to say it, there you go. I'm going to say it, I've got so much left to see, but I'm going to say it anyway, because this is just stunning. Oh, that was quite the drive, but we are here. Welcome to Tarfrat. It seems pretty chilled here. We're in like a palm oasis and then there are just camper vans everywhere. I've never seen so many. There must be 200 vans here now, but they're all really spaced out. As you can see, can't see anything behind me. But yeah, as I turn around this way, you can see the rocks, you can see a few campers now. What a stunning location. Time to take the dog for a walk. If only there was somewhere nice to walk here. That'll do it. Well, they say this is a mecca for camper vans or motorhomes. They're not no. lying, are they? No, they're not. I've never seen so many campers. Oh, we didn't expect to find a village up here. Guess this is the old Tefraut, or however oh, you pronounce right. it. This way. It's like a mushroom. If it appear, I'm now sat under the mushroom. They're going to find Kath and the dog, they've gone walkabouts. I can hear them, they can't be far away. There they are. You can see the van from here. What a cool landscape. This is so astronomical. 
cool. for five hours and then be like, oh, let's just go and climb that mountain. <laughs> Are you filming me? Because you found a funny looking stone. What does it look like? It looks like a dick. <laughs> About the right size. <laughs> now we're up here, we don't know how to get down. <laughs> I think it's that way. It's, it's definitely down, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just filming Kath, she thinks she knows the way. So. It is, look, you come up here. Nice. Big rock. Didn't we? <laughs> the confidence turns to, didn't we? It was really grippy on the way up, it feels really slippery now. <laughs> Maybe it's a different way. Maybe. Not content with finding a stone shaped like a penis, she's now found one that looks like a face. It does look, it's like one of the town elders looking over the town. It's cool. Ooh, he's got nose and mouth and eye. Looks very wise. And there's my stick, so we have to come up this way. What do you think? Can you see it too? Or is it just calf? No, it's a face. <laughs> no, I can you see know, it too. It's actually called that pareidolia, <laughs> which is the way the human mind finds faces in all sorts of patterns and things. Well, there we go. Fun fact of the day. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Look at this guy, he's not giving up his spot. Down he goes. <laughs> Well, that's that then. That's the painted rocks of Tarfright. Well, as Stu just said, painted rocks or no painted rocks, this is a pretty cool landscape and uh, we might not have come out here if it hadn't have been for the painted rocks, so there is that at least. We'll, uh, we'll show you a bit of the desert road now as we're making our way back to our parker. And back on the main road, you might think it would be slightly less bumpy. In fact, it's worse. The tarmac isn't wide enough for the van in most parts, and the rest is like washboard. Well, that's shaking all my fillings loose. Gotta love a bit of washboard. <sighs> the rattle on the van. <laughs> 24 kilometers an hour, that's all we're doing. Oh god. Wow. I mean you should be sitting in your uh, your armchairs at home shaking like this watching this. You hear that? <laughs> there we are, we're back parked up in Taff Road. Uh, we have moved to the other side of the road because the signal's better, but that'll do for the rest of the day. And that's it for this week. Thank you very much for all your support, uh, all your likes and subscriptions. Uh, we're fairly overwhelmed with uh, the response that we got from uh, our last video, our earthquake appeal. Uh, if you haven't watched it, there'll be a link in this video. Get on and watch it, put your hands in your pockets. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe.